Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 87. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. Hey, in uh, these videos 87 to 91, we're going to talk about simple linear regression. In this first video, we're going to talk about the scatter diagram to look at the relationship between two variables. All right, so two variables. Here's our first data set. I think we have five examples in this video here. Time, studying for a test, and score on the test. So there's two variables. The time someone studied, and this is a random sample. So this person studied two hours and got a score of 50. This person studied 13 hours, got a score of 89. So is there a relationship between studying and score? The time studying will be our x variable or our independent variable. Later, we'll learn how to create a model to predict. Given a certain time, we'll predict what the score should be. So this is also called a predictor variable. The score on the test will be y, or our dependent variable, dependent on whatever x is, or the predicted variable. Now, in this video, we want to look at scatter chart or diagram to visualize the relationship. Now, when you list your x and y, you always want to put the x in the first column, put a label at the top describing what the data is, label at the top selecting, uh, describing what the data is, highlight, control shift down now, you can see we have 30, uh, uh, sampled 30 students, time studied, score on test, and we want to go to the insert ribbon, and here's our charts. Now, a big mistake that people make when doing two number XY scatter diagram is they try to use a line. Line charts are for when you have one number listed vertically in categories along the horizontal axis. Now even my dad, a PhD physicist, phones me up one day and goes, ah, I can't get my scatter chart to work. And sure enough, he was using a line chart instead of a scatter. So XY scatter, two numbers, we use scatter. When you have sample data, you should use the points. If you have a model that predicts the actual XY scatter points, like, for example, in business, you have fixed cost, variable cost, sales revenue analysis, you might have a model that predicts. And so then you might use the scatter chart with a connecting line. But if you have actual randomly selected data points, the line doesn't make any sense. You actually want the points. All right, so I'm going to click. And there is our XY scatter. Let me scroll up here. All right, and so this is good. One of the glaring omissions when we uh, click on the default chart is there's no X axis label or Y axis label. Now, we'll put that in just a moment. But here's the essence of what XY scatter means. I'm going to click on this point right here. Click on it twice. If you hover your cursor, you can see it says 1066, that means studied 10 hours, got 66 score. Over here, scutter, score, uh, studied 13 hours, got 100 points on the score. XY means you move along the X axis a certain amount. So we moved, let's see, what's that one? We moved 13 out and then 100 up. Hours along X axis, horizontal axis, score along the vertical or y axis. Two numbers out a certain distance, up a certain distance to get a single point that represents the relationship between those two numbers. All of these together, we get a visual impression. It sort of looks like the more you study, the higher your score. The longer the time, the higher your score. That's called a direct relationship. Actually, Let's go ahead. I'm already confused looking at this chart. Let's add a label here and a label here. Not only that, but this is chart junk. We don't need that, so I'm going to delete. I don't need this title, delete. I don't need these lines. Now, notice when I click on the outside edge, it highlights the whole chart. I want to click on the inside, delete, get rid of those. All right, now let's go up to Layout. In the Labels group, Axis Titles. We'll do Horizontal first, and we'll do Below. Immediately, the label shows up, and it's a solid line, not a dashed line. You immediately click in the formula bar, type an equal sign. I want to link that label to that cell right there, B18, Enter. And so now we have our label. 
All right, now I'm going to go back up to Layout, Labels, Axis Titles, and now I'm going to do the Vertical, and I'm going to choose Rotate It. You can also hit the F2 key. Watch up here. I'm going to hit F2, and it puts the cursor up there. I type an equal sign, and I click on the cell with the label for my Y or vertical data. All right, so now we have time studying hours along the X or horizontal and score on test. Now, so the way it works is we go out a certain am amount and up. It looks like, right, as hours increases, our score increases. That's called a direct or positive relationship. Later, we'll see how to calculate a number associated with that relationship called coefficient of correlation. And positive, we'll get, when we get a positive number, it means it's direct or positive. Later, we have an example in this video. When we get data points going like this, it means as x increases, the y will decrease. All right. Also in this video, we'll have a, an example when there aren't, there is no relationship, when the data points are just all over the place. Now in this video, this is what we're going to do make the scatter chart. But there's a great feature in the scatter chart. We can add a trend line that will add the simple or the estimated simple linear regression equation and r squared. We'll see how to calculate all that stuff in a later video. But watch this. It's so easy. Right click the data points, point to add trend line. I'm going to click add trend line. And instantly it, oh, and does this fit in? So it asks us what kind of, or by default it's, it shows linear here, right? We want that. Um, we could have some other relationship, but we want to keep it linear and then come down to the bottom and it says display equation on chart and display R squared. I'm going to click close. And just like that, I'm going to click on it and my with my move cursor I'm going to drag it down here. That is amazing. We'll see how to do the, the calculating to determine all this stuff later. But look at that, y equals 4.229x plus 34.362. r squared equals 0.72. Now, this is our typical equation. If you remember from math, it's y equals mx plus b. In our textbook, they refer to it as uh, predicted y equals b0, which is the y-intercept, plus b1 times x, b1 meaning the slope. All right, so this 4.29 is the slope. So you take the slope times the x plus what's called the y-intercept. Y-intercept means when x is 0, what do, we, uh, what do we expect to get? That means if we study 0, we should expect to get 34 points from our model, right? That line also crosses at the y-axis. That's why it's called the y-intercept, 34. Now what does the slope mean? The slope simply means for every one unit of x that we move, how far do we move up or down? Rise over run. So if I add one hour to studying, I expect to increase the points by about 4.3. R squared, we'll learn later how to calculate that. It's called the good R squared, that's what it's called, or good, it, it gives us a measure of the goodness of fit of the test. R squared would be equal to 1 if all these data points were exactly on our estimated regression line. Right? That would mean our model could predict perfectly in line with the observed values. The closer to zero it is, the more the, the points are spread out, the less good our model fits the data. Anything closer to one, then it means that our model predicts pretty well. So 0.72 is pretty good for predicting. OK, so that's our first example. Let's scroll down. There's our second example. All right, so our X is going to be temperature, and our Y is going to be sales of chicken soup. So a business looked at, analyzed you know, the dollar amount for their chicken soup on a randomly selected number of days, and they looked at the temperature. Right? It, intuitively, you know, if we think about up here, intuitively, we, it makes sense that as time studying increases that our score should go up, right? And so intuitively here, you think, well, maybe. If it's colder, people buy more soup. So the uh, they did a random sample, and they want to check. Really, it's not until you get 
data, collect it, and look at it and see, well, maybe there's some evidence to support that. So let's go ahead and plot this. Now when you start doing XY scatter, a lot of XY scatters, you might learn the keyboard shortcut for the scatter chart. Remember, it's insert, uh, and then right there, escape. If you hit the Alt key, notice these screen tips pop up. I see N, so I'm going to tap N for insert. And then you notice that D is for scatter. And you also notice that the, uh, um, the scatter data points is orange, and you hit Enter. Watch, I'm going to just all, uh, escape, skip, escape. Alt, N, D, Enter. All right, and I'm going to delete that. The legend, the horizontal lines, the title. I'm going to immediately add some labels. Layout, axis, I'll do the horizontal below. Click up in the formula bar, equals, and there's my temperature. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go notice if you don't have the chart selected, those go away. But if you select it, the context sensitive ribbons pop up. Access, I'm going to say vertical, rotated, F2 to put my cursor up there, equals, and click on that label. Immediately come over here, right click, add trend line. I'm going to select the linear one, I mean, it's by default, and then click equation R squared. And uh, there we have our what's called inverse or negative uh, relationship. Now, if we have a negative relationship here, or inverse relationship, uh, we'll see that the slope is going to be negative. It means as I increase x, I'm going to decrease y, right? So you can see lower temperature, more sales in soup. Uh, higher temperature, lower sales. Right? So there's our um, scatter diagram with equation in R squared. Again, we'll talk a lot more in later videos about how to create this and, and use it to predict. All right, let's look at our next example. The same store owner, grocery store, said, hey, let's check out temperature as it relates to sales of ice cream. So we went out and took a sample. Let's go ahead and plot this and see if there is a relationship. You'd think that there would be, right? Hotter it gets, the more ice cream sold. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt N D Enter. Let's clean this up a bit. Add some labels. I'm going to scoot this over here. So layout, axis will do the horizontal below. Formula bar equals, there's our temperature, layout, axis, now we'll do vertical, rotate it. F2 to jump up to the formula bar equals, and then we'll get our sales of ice cream. All right, so it looks like as the temperature increases, uh, sales increase. So this is a direct or positive relationship. Right click, add trend line, linear equation in R squared. All right, and so you can see uh, 112 x minus 3,354 with R squared of 0.9. Right, so uh, pretty strong uh, goodness of fit for uh, this model here. Now, one other thing we'll talk about. Now, notice there's a 3,000, minus 3,000 is the y-intercepts way down here. In general, when later we'll create a model, right? And we took some sample data. Uh, we can kind of estimate the relationship over this range of values. So if we're going to use it to predict, uh, we'd want to probably be careful about jumping outside of these ranges, right? Because uh, uh, our model, our data, certainly shows, looks like a linear relationship here, but it could be some other relationship uh, outside that range. All right, so that is a direct or positive. Let's go ahead and look at example number four. This is our last example. So we have years using Excel and their expert level. So they took a test which assesses their expert level. You know, um, I don't know, you might 
tend to think that the longer you've been using Excel, the better you are at it. Um, so let's go ahead and highlight this. Alt N D Enter. And whoa, from this sample, it certainly looks like the data's all over the place, right? Uh, I add our layout axis. I'm going to do the horizontal equals, and I'm going to click on that cell B101. Vertical, rotated, click up here, equal sign, and try and click on C101. So we have uh, expert level and using Excel. And um, so it doesn't always necessarily translate uh, either direction, right? As the number of years using Excel incre increases, uh, it doesn't necessarily uh, look like we're always going to, there's a pattern that says the longer we use Excel, the better we get at it, right? Some people that's certainly the case, other people it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like a direct or inverse relationship. It really looks like there's basically no relationship. I'm going to right click, add trend line. We got our linear, I'll say equation and R squared. And uh, Sure enough, uh, later we'll see how to calculate this R squared longhand. But it uh, doesn't look like uh, the goodness of fit is very good. We'll also learn how to do correlation, uh, coefficient of correlation, which will tell us uh, 0 for no relationship, po near positive 1 for direct, and near negative 1 for uh, inverse. All right, uh, in our next video, we'll look at uh, one other chart before we jump in and do a bunch of uh, calculating to create our model. All right, we'll see you next video.